Hi everyone, welcome to part five of this series, three Excel functions you need to know. We've got some great functions in this video, so stay tuned for all of them. And you, if you haven't watched parts one to four, please make sure you go and check that out on our YouTube channel. And I will also post the links to those videos in the description down below. So our first function that we are going to discuss today is called the formula text function. So how this effectively works, this function will display your formula into text that you have used. So let's jump right into this so that I can show you exactly how this works. So I've got this table set up and as you can see, we've got, we calculated the profit here and you can see in our formula bar, this formula that we have used. So how this formula text works is quite simple. Let's for instance, just start with this. So I'm going to type in the equal sign and then I'm going to type in my formula text function. And from here, you can then just reference to the cell that you want your text to appear from. So I'm going to reference to our profit cell here and you will see once I click enter how this works. So as you can see here, our formula text function that we have used displays our formula that was used to calculate our profit. And this is an easy and a simple function that you can use in Microsoft Excel. And I just want to quickly explain how you can use this on another level once you are not working in a table. So let's say for instance, we've got an X and a Y value. We can make this a five and this, uh, let's do a 10. So from here, I'm just going to rename this cell link here to a, the X value. And this one, I'm just going to rename to Y. So once I've renamed these, Let's simply do a calculation. So I'm going to do X plus Y. It's quite simple. Let's do a X divided by Y option and even an X multiplied by Y. So now we've got our three little equations here. This is just a simple example. If you are working in calculations and you do use this often, um, people can ask you how you have calculated something. I know this is simple, but you will understand how this works. So we're going to type out our, our function now, and it's going to be the equal sign. We are going to type the formula text function and reference back to the given cell that we want our formula to display. So I'm going to reference there. And as you can see, we have got exactly how this was calculated. So now there is no need for someone to head into the section and look up at your formula bar to see what you've done. You can simply show them with this formula text function and you can display your formulas in Microsoft Excel. Our next function that we are going to discuss is the take function in Microsoft Excel. And although this spreadsheet looks kind of funny, but just bear with me because I'm going to run through a couple of examples with this function to show you exactly how you can use the take function. So let's jump right into this function. So you can see we've got this little matrix set up here. I know it's quite simple, but you will understand exactly how the take function works once we get into it. So going to type out our for our function and it's going to be the equal sign and we're going to type out take then excel will ask us for our array so i'm just going to select this little matrix that we've got right going here and then this will be our array so once you enter a comma excel will ask you for the row that you want to take from this matrix that is effectively how this works. You are going to extract some information from a table or wherever you, your array is located. So we want 
to do our first row so it's simply going to be a one and we can then just end our bracket there and once you press enter you will see our first row of this matrix that we have extracted so when you are working with this function you need to note that a positive number means that you will either start from the top or from the left hand side and your negative numbers will start from the bottom or your right hand side so let's do for instance the last row so it's going to be our take function and then again our array and then we want to get we want to extract the last row so we're going to use a minus one for this instance i'm going to close my bracket and once i press enter you'll see the last row of our little matrix is, has been extracted. So when you're working with this and you need columns, works pretty much the same. So we're going to select our array. Our rows we're going to leave blank. So I'm just going to skip this part. So effectively you're going to enter two commas after one another. And then with the columns, as I said, we want our first column. So this will be a positive one that we're going to enter into this function. And once you do that, you'll see we have extracted our first column. And then let's quickly do the last column as well. So then again, my rows, we don't, don't want to extract any rows here. So I'm just going to leave that blank. And my last column is going to be minus one. And from here, we can extract our last column. So now we get to the inter interesting part of this function. And you can isolate certain cells that you want to extract. So let's just enter our formula there. And then I'm going to select my array. And from here, we are looking for our first row. And we are looking for our first column. So once you enter this, you'll see that we have extracted the first row and our first column of our array that we have indicated. And then again, last row, last column works pretty much the same. Going to enter our array there. And then our rows are going to be a minus one. And our columns is going to be minus one. And there we have extracted the last row and the last column. So I know this seems great. But you need to note that when you work with this function, you work effectively in ranges. So once you want to extract something from in our little matrix, we want to extract something from the second row or the our second column then you need to note that this function and how this function is going to work so if i type in for instance we're going to search for two rows and we are going to do two columns and once you press enter you will see how this has extracted so we can't specifically extract something from the from our matrix here the take function works in a range so just note when you are working in this function but this is the gist of it this is how the take function works in microsoft excel our last function that we are going to discuss in this video today is the rand array function and this will produce a random array of your specifications so let's jump right into this formula to explain exactly what I mean with this. So we are simply going to type in the equal sign and we are going to type out our formula. So we're going to use the RAND array formula here. And now we can see Excel is asking us how many rows do we want in our array. So let's do, for instance, 10 rows and then columns you can vary this let's do then again 10 columns just to show you how this works and from here now we've set up our basic our borders of our array 
And now we want to start to look at what type of numbers we are going to display. So you can then select your minimum value in this array. So let's just do our minimum as a zero. And then again, our maximum value, we can then enter something like, let's do 5,000 to see how that works. And then the last option of this is the integer section of this function. And it effectively asks for a true or false answer here. So a false will return a decimal number. So let's do a false just to show you how this will work. So once you've entered your rand array and you have specified your array, once you click enter, you can see how this produces. So we've got a bunch of decimals here and we've got a bunch of random numbers. So now you can see exactly how this function can produce a random array. So this is amazing when you need to produce random numbers or random stock numbers. This will work brilliantly when working with that type of information. So let's just do our last section here. Let's use the integer function, our true value here. And once you click on true, this will then remove the decimals and it will produce solid numbers. So once I click there, you can see we have no decimal points here, nothing after the comma. We only have a bunch of integers that is in our random array. And so you can play around with this formula. It works brilliantly. You can then just do, let's do one column and you can see how that produces a random array for 10 rows and one column. And this is a great option for you when you were working in Microsoft Excel. And I hope this function was helpful. And I hope all of these functions today were helpful. And if it were, if one of them were at least helpful to you, please remember to like the video down below and subscribe to our channel because this will truly help us grow as a YouTube channel. And please comment down below which function you enjoyed the most and which function you can use in your day-to-day -day life. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, cheers.